Okay guys, uh, got both dogs here. And anyway, um, I want to do a video on going duals with uh, an AVR that only has a single output. Uh, now this may seem like a pretty simple thing for a lot of people, but there are some people that think that they can't do that because their system is only set up for one subwoofer. And I understand that. Uh, and it's a pretty simple uh, solution. Uh, this is a, a, a media, media bridge splitter or RCA adapter and all it does is it takes the signal in uh, you plug this into your subwoofer output and then you've got an output for two subwoofers so you plug with the left one or the right one doesn't really matter because they're both the same signal so you're getting a mono signal so the same signal is going to both right and left subwoofers okay so that's really all you need to do uh, to do it and then when you when you get both subs uh, my recommendation is to keep each sub on the inside of both the left and right channel uh, speakers. So your towers, your bookshelves, whatever you've got, uh, probably put them right on the inside. You can do them on the outside. That's fine. It's not going to. There aren't any major rules here. Uh, but I, I've played it, played around with it a little bit, and I've really preferred this setup here. Uh, what it also does is it keeps the the subs equidistant to your sweet spot. So. Typically, the way you're going to set up your system is that the sweet spot's going to be directly in front of the center channel, and you know everything's going to be kind of symmetrical that way. Now, you can't get you can't have a sweet spot in every single uh, listening position, despite what some uh, you know companies will tell you. But you you know you get it set up to the center, and it's going to sound a lot better seat to seat with the bass. Uh, you, basically, you just want to get it set up in the first place. And the whole idea behind, uh, if, you, if you'll notice, uh, the baffle, which is the, the front plate where the subwoofer is mounted to, um, and the, uh, the towers and the center are all pretty much on the same plane. They're all pretty much matched up. And, you know, there's, there's you know, it's not going to be perfect, but I've got them matched pretty closely. And what that does is it just kind of, you know, I don't know, keeps everything simple. Now, if I was to push those subwoofers way back or those speakers way forward, uh, they you'd come in, well, if you're going to run uh, an EQ, you know, a, a room EQ, uh, like your Odyssey or something like that, it's going to make those adjustments for you on the distance settings. But if you were to, uh, say, move that tower back a foot, and not adjust your your distance settings, you would have uh, you know a, a phase issue. So the phase that should be coming from this and the phase that should be coming from this, it would be a little bit out of phase. Okay, now why am I talking about that? Well, if you have a dual subwoofer setup, but you don't have them set up on either side of the entertainment center like this. Let's say you've got one here and then one way over there. Okay, your distance from each subwoofer to the main listening spot is probably going to be a little bit different. All right. So in that case, when you're running it off of an, an AVR and one of these, uh, an AVR that only has one subwoofer output, you're not going to get the distance settings uh, to each adjust each subwoofer independently. Okay. So that brings to mind brings to another point uh, to the topic, which is if you've got one sub over here and then you've got a sub further away over here you're going to be slightly out of phase uh, the the sound is going to get there quicker from that sub than the sub that's way over there okay that's assuming the subway over there is further away from you okay so if it's closer then that sub will get there closer you, you get what i'm saying the distance from the main listening point makes a difference so how can you combat that well uh, these subs and, and all SVS subs uh, that I'm aware of have a variable phase and so a lot of subwoofers they just have a switch and that switch is either 0 or 180 degree phase okay uh, what SVS has done is they've got a variable phase and what that means is say that subwoofer is closer than the subwoofer over here your AVR would usually adjust that with the distance settings. And so it would say, well, this sub's 12 feet away, that sub over there is 14 feet away, and it would make those adjustments. But if you're trying to run two subs with that situation, that, sub will, that, that adjustment won't be there. 
So what you can do is, let's say that sub's closer and that sub's further away. You can turn the phase on this subwoofer uh, a little bit and basically what it is is a time delay. And so you're saying for that sub, I want to take it a little longer for that sub to get here. Okay, and so that's, if you're going to do dual subs with a, with a point one receiver, a receiver that only has one subwoofer output, it's important to get a sub that has variable phase so that you can tinker with that. Now, exactly what to set it to, <laughs> that's some math I'm not willing to do right now because it's gonna vary a lot. And when you set up subs like these, uh, what you'll notice is that the actual distance is a bit further away than what the subs actually are. So these subs happen to be about 12 feet away, but in my AVR it says 14 and a half. The reason for that being is that the, the DSP, which makes these subs sound so good along with everything else, uh, it puts a bit of a delay on the signal. And so it tells, you know, according to the mic when it reads the sub, uh, when those when the signals come in, it sounds like the subs are coming from a little bit further away. So that's why the, there be some discrepancies uh, with a lot of these better subwoofers that have DSP in them. All right, so, uh, so I just wanted to touch on those few points. Uh, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, some of this stuff may seem complicated, and, and frankly it is. It, it, you know, it can get really complicated. And Bear, hey buddy, <laughs> quit digging. <laughs> Um, but anyway, uh, a lot of these, a lot of this stuff can get pretty complicated. And uh, you know, for example, I messed around with the with the, the phase uh, when I first, you know, when I first got the PB one thousands about a year ago. I was trying to get the graph just right, and so what I did was I I, I turned one subwoofer slightly out of phase. I, I you know turned it to like you know, just 20% and then half and then a full 180 degree phase and all this stuff, just just messing around. And I was able to get a much better looking graph where I didn't have a dip right at the crossover. The problem was it didn't sound better. And so that's one of those things where this gets a little dicey because you can think, oh, if I get my graph perfect, it's going to sound perfect. And that's just not true all the time. And so. That's one of those things for me, I find that I want to have dual subs completely in phase. And uh, Barry, you're just stealing a show today, buddy. Um, but anyway, and, and my last point with all this, if you're gonna go with dual subs, you know, and you're going to make this upgrade, really get good subs. You know, uh, the, the cheapest subs I've found so far that pass muster with me uh, are the PB1000s, and if you go to the website, the, the you know the list, uh, best subwoofers. Um, I've got a bunch of different subs on there. I usually don't put anything on there that's over 2,000, 2,500 bucks, uh, because really you get up to that range, that's beyond anything I would I would afford myself. So uh, I'm trying to put up stuff that's a good value. So uh, you know, but if you're going to go with duels, if you go with like. A pair of $350 subwoofers and and I know that this is time sensitive you may be watching this in 10 years and by then they may have really good subs out there for 350 bucks but as of right now in 2016 I'm not aware of any that I think are truly good and that usually has to do with the fact that it's just it costs some money to make some good subs you know you gotta have a DSP in there uh, you know really good big magnets on the subs themselves a uh, decent amount of power and all that to really make good bass so, you know, for me, if you go out and you get two $350 subs, it, it just seems tragic to me. You know, you might as well get a, a set of good subs. If you're gonna go so far as to get dual subs and get something that's good quality, uh, make sure it's good to begin with, you know what I mean? Uh, because most subs out there, you know, I talk about this all the time, uh, they get pretty breathless under 30 hertz. Most of them start their taper and start to get quieter uh, from 30 to 50 hertz, depending on how good the sub is. And so, you know, that's just my thing. If you're gonna go duels, uh, start off with some good subs, you know. And uh, yes, absolutely, um, you know, the PB1000s, which are just 10s, uh, as far as depth goes and, and things like that and performance, yeah, they'll outperform um, many 15-inch subwoofers that are that are more common. Now, the 15-inch subs that are on the list, uh, they're probably gonna <laughs> they're gonna smoke them. But uh, you know, the PB1000s are an excellent entry point for people that are wanting to get good bass. Uh, so, 
that's just my thing is go with something that's decent to begin with. Don't, you know, don't cheap out on that because, well, I made a whole channel based on this, right? <laughs> so, but there really is a difference and the people that go with this, with the better subs, and they, they can hear the difference. It's pretty undeniable. Uh, so anyway, guys, hopefully that helps you get set up. You know, I had a viewer ask about that. You know, he says, oh, I've only got a 7.1 or a 5.1 receiver. Can I still do this? I'm like, yeah, but there are some caveats. So I thought I'd do a video on it. Uh, it's nothing particularly new on this site, but I thought it'd be good to point out those things, particularly the thing with the variable uh, phase settings. Uh, that's, that can be one of those things that can make the difference whether you can integrate dual subs or not. Uh, if you've got a situation where you can't put subs perfectly set up like this and one's going to be further away, a variable phase dial can can make it easier to integrate. So anyway, guys, hopefully that helps out. Uh, you know, oh, and one more thing. Um, if you go through and, and set all this stuff up uh, to, vol to match these, you can just run the pink noise generator, even on your, just your AVR, turn one sub on and you know, measure with a with a SPL meter or, or some other, you know, I'm using a, a mini DSP UMIC one uh, along with Room EQ Wizard to, you know, measure my room. And what I found was I had, bo had both dials set to right at 50%. And when I put that on there, I found that actually that sub was producing a little bit more output. So I actually, uh, you know, I had to turn that sub down a little bit to get them matched. So it wasn't way off, but it was off just enough. And when I got it dialed back in, it really did make a difference. So, uh, you know, definitely worth checking out when, when you get that far. If you don't have an SPL meter, it's not gonna kill you just to have both subs set at the same gain. Uh, but if, if they are a little bit off, it's one of those things you can do to fine tune it. Uh, you know, it wasn't like, oh my gosh, it was terrible before and now it's perfect, uh, but it was, slightly off before and now yes it is all you know a little bit better so uh anyway guys sorry to ramble on you know how i do this <laughs> so anyway guys thanks for watching and please subscribe